In this series, we're going to talk about handling objections with just about any buyer in any situation. The good news is, almost every single thing that you hear, every single thing that we're going to cover, every single thing that we're going to touch on works best if you are just being yourself. There's nothing in any of these videos that is going to replace you. What we will, though, is offer a little bit of structure and some ways that you could handle just about any situation and any problem that could potentially arise throughout the sales process. Number one, have good intentions with people. Want things to go well. When you are confident that you're going to provide the buyer with the best service and you want them to get the best service and you want them to get a great deal, and you want them to get what they want, things are going to go better. Want the best for your customer. And when you do what is good for them, you are going to get what is good for you. Enthusiasm, energy, a good attitude cannot be replaced. You could do or say almost anything when you're overcoming objections or selling. And if you have the right attitude and you got some energy behind it, Chances are you're going to be very, very successful. Do you smile? Are you pumped up? Are you genuinely happy when you're working with the customer? Or are you put upon? Are you too worried about what's good for you? Are you anxious? Are you trying to rush people? When you just have good enthusiasm, good energy, and an attitude that's positive, the majority of the time, things are going to go very, very well. You want to be a Zen master when handling objections. Remember that objections are not about you. And a lot of times people are gonna complain. They're gonna come in with misconceptions of things that are gonna happen at the dealership that are completely false, that are completely made up. Some people are gonna come in thinking they need to treat you poorly in order to get the best deal. This is something that a lot of people don't do very often. And so your ability just to hang in there with the buyer, not take things personally, is critical. You want to be a good listener. The majority of the time, when you're truly in good rapport with somebody, when things are going well, aren't they talking to you a lot? When you're listening, when you're paying attention to people, isn't that usually when they have the best experience? On the flip side of this, when you're talking the entire time and the buyer's being quiet and they're not saying much, that is when things usually are not going as well. It is very important to remember how committed the buyer is regardless of what they tell you. They come into the dealership. I'm not buying a car today. They call you. I'm shopping three other places. They send in an internet inquiry. We're shopping a few different dealers. They are probably committed to doing business or you would not be communicating with them. A lot of times when I'm training in person, I like to say this. How do you tell if a buyer is committed? They show up at your business. How do you tell if they're committed? Some people will say, well, because they got buying signals. Well, because they got their checkbook in their hand. Well, because they got this. Well, because they got that. The truth is the buyer is committed because they are with you. Most people will never even contact you until they're at the buying stage. Chances are they've done 10, 15, 20 hours worth of research before you ever even see them. So regardless of what they say, regardless of what they do at the initial point of contact, they're likely very committed. It's also important to remember that almost all objections are just noise and you could treat them like they're complaints. You don't need to overreact. When you hear stuff that doesn't need to be acknowledged, just smile and give the person a good attitude back. Wow, you car dealers, you, you, you guys are all the same. <laughs> I hear you. And just keep going with things. People are just going to complain. Maybe they say the price is too high. That might just be a complaint. Maybe they say that they don't want to trade in their vehicle. That might just be a complaint. 
if you really take a look at what you hear when the buyer is saying something negative or going against the deal, chances are it's just noise and something that is not going to stop things from progressing. A key point also when you're trying to be truly successful with objections is to know exactly what the goal is and exactly what you're trying to accomplish. If you're on the phone, you're probably trying to get the appointment or you're trying to get the completion of a sale. You're trying to wrap this thing up. Chances are you're trying to get the appointment. You may be at the point in the deal though where you could get it closed over the phone and finalized, especially if you're taking advantage of digital retailing. On the lot, you get hit with an objection. You're probably just trying to get to the next step of the sales process. You're in the greeting. You're trying to get to fact finding. You're in fact finding. You're trying to get to the demonstration drive. And when you are online, you want to know what the goal is. You get an internet lead. What are you trying to accomplish? You send the buyer a video. What are you trying to accomplish? With the text, what are you trying to do? Knowing exactly what success is, exactly what the goal is, will help you be a lot more successful. Don't worry about being right or making your point. Remember, you have somebody that is fully committed. When you're talking to somebody, if they say something you don't like, hey, you know what? I heard this or I heard that. You don't need to put somebody in their place. A lot of time, the best thing to say is nothing. You're just going through the sales process. When you're trying to handle objections and be truly effective, you need to be able to pick your battles. And it is okay to let somebody be right. It is okay just to swallow that. I would rather get paid than make my point in most cases. Agree with people. One of the most important parts of objection handling. You know what? You're right. I see your point. I'd be doing this the exact same way. You definitely came in at the right time. Oh, that's a great vehicle. Agreement is one of the greatest things you could do when selling. Tell people why you agree with them and then move on to the next step in the sales process. Move on to the next spot. You know what? I think the price of the vehicle is too high. Agree with them and tell them why you agree. You know what? I agree with you. This market is crazy right now. Pricing has been all over the place and it always feels like it's too much money. I assure you this though. If you're looking for the best deal, you came to the right place. Let's go pick something out and then move on. Agree, tell people why you agree, and then move on to the next point. Most of the time when you're selling, you're not really closing. You're just taking somebody through the sales process. You're on the phone, you agree, you tell people why you agree with them, and then you ask for the appointment. You're in the demo drive. You get back from the demo drive. Somebody throws something at you. You agree. You tell them why you agree, and then you take them inside and you write them up. Agree because close. One of the biggest fundamentals of objection handling and something we're going to touch on a lot in this series. After the close, you want to move to the next step. Now, the close could be anything in the sales process. Maybe you're in the greeting during a phone call. The buyer calls you up. They say this, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I'm calling three or four places and I'm going to buy from whoever has the best deal. The close in this point is just to move on through your inbound sales call guide. Let me give you an example. Okay, cool. You definitely called the right place. You're calling three or four dealers. I understand. That's the way I'd buy a car. And that's smart. I'll be more than happy to give you all the information that you need. And I'm very confident if you're going to buy on a price, you're going to buy from us. Now, what vehicle were you considering? And what type of equipment did you want on it? I close. I handle that problem. And then I move on to the next step. Somebody says they don't want to drive a vehicle. Hey, you know what? I, I, I hear you. These are brand new cars. I, I don't, don't know why you... You know, I'm surprised people always want to drive them. I know these drive great. I know you don't want to drive it. Let me get the key. I'm going to pull it out. And then at least you could look at it and make sure it's got the features. Okay, but I'm not driving it. 
You get the key, you pull the car out, and then what happens? You know what? I, maybe I will take this for a drive. You close, and then you move on to the next step. Close, move on. Close, move on. And this is why agreement, especially early on, is so important. This is why knowing what the next step is, is so important. You're making an unsold showroom traffic call. You call the buyer up. They go, you know what? I, I really want to buy that truck from last night. I just think the money's way too high. You guys are crazy. Okay, it's the money. Why don't you come back in and let's see what we could do. I'm trying to close on the appointment. I hear them. I acknowledge them. I move to the next step and then close on it. And we're going to talk about this a lot in this series. And last, but definitely not least, something to keep in mind while you're going through this material is make sure that you keep objections small. Learn how to minimize objections. If objections are no big deal to me, there's a very good chance they're going to be no big deal to the customer. If you overreact, though, and you take everything too seriously, and you get offended when people hit you with stuff, things are not going to go as well if you just let them roll off of you and keep the objection small. There's a ton of information in this series. As you are going through, try and keep these principles, these points in mind. And remember, if you ever have any questions, we're always here.